Spider-Man had a lot of problems getting to the theater. James Cameron was supposed to do a version that was supposed to come out in like 1995, and I had been following it because I was a big Spider-Man fan and I was waiting. When are we gonna see it? When is it gonna happen? This was around that time when we were all kind of wondering what was gonna happen with superhero movies. You know, like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, and like these were the things we were getting, and like we just didn't really know what was gonna happen. And then finally they said, yeah, it's gonna happen. And the director of Darkman is directing Spider-Man. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. It was surprising that Sam Raimi was directing it, I remember. People thought of him as much more of kind of a horror guy than a superhero guy. I love Sam Raimi. I love the Evil Dead movies. And the thought of him directing a Spider-Man movie, it, it kind of didn't compute. I underestimated Spider-Man, to be honest with you, because he was never my guy growing up. When that first movie came out, I understood how much everybody around the world cared about finally seeing a Spider-Man movie on the big screen. That was the first superhero film I ever saw in my whole life, ever. And I lost my damn mind. I went around for months, like, pretending to shoot webs out of my wrists. Go web! The movie was packed, um, sold out, you know, at the six o'clock showing on a Friday night. And people were loving it. Yeah, Spider-Man was everything. That was so exciting. I saw the first Spider-Man movie in the theater five times. It was, yeah, it was an exciting time. You just knew that the world was gonna open up because this movie made all the money. Spider-Man came out and blew everybody away, including me. I think it's a great, great movie. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. This is a true origin story of Peter Parker. I thought they did a wonderful job of it. People are probably sick of Spider-Man and his origin story by now because we've had so many iterations, but back then, it was refreshing for people to see, especially a character that was different than X-Men or Batman. It wasn't a dark character. It was a kid in high school. I would compare it to Donner's original Superman, where you're like, there's the comic come to life. Spider-Man 1 is so much fun because we get to see him learn to use his powers for the first time. He's going off and wrestling Randy Savage. What are you doing up there? I love him like losing his mind, like jumping over buildings and like discovering that he can crawl up things and like learning how to find his webs and stuff like that. Organic web shooters. That was a hot button topic for the comic book fans. In the comic book, he's a scientist, so he, he creates his own webbing. Even though I don't like the fact that he's basically a mutant, in this because he doesn't have the web shooters, but when he's discovering it and to see him getting so excited that he has these powers, I thought that worked really well. I thought Tobey Maguire was so endearing and so sweet, but also totally believable as like this unlikely kind of nerd superhero. I still think Tobey Maguire is the, is the standard for Spider-Man. Sad to say that I think that when I talk about Peter Parker, I'm talking about Tom Holland a lot more now. Honestly, for me, I love Garfield. I just, I think Toby's the best. I think what Marvel did right with Homecoming is that they went back to high school. This movie's not quite right. Like, Homecoming is the version of Spider-Man that I imagine. School paper? Toby Wire's still kind of a dork, and Peter Parker's not really supposed to be that much of a dork, I don't think. His version is the, the old 60s version, the aw shucks guy, Andrew Garfield, and now you have Tom Holland are playing a more modern version. It was a simpler time then, guys. What, early 2000s? People saw the world as a little more black and white, so you got Peter Parker. He's a really nerdy kind of put upon guy. He gets spider powers and has to, you know, kill his best friend's dad, maybe. It's like, you know, typical teenage stuff. Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Asborn? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hope to see you again. Yeah. I just love Willem Dafoe in this movie so much. I don't think you could cast a more perfect Green Goblin in that he looks like the Green Goblin. <laughs> His face is terrifying. He literally has like the cheekbones of Satan and I love it. He's menacing. He's just a good actor and he makes things creepy. He makes things scary. Am I? Perfect casting. When I heard about that, I was like, they couldn't have done a better job, but you put him in a fucking mask. I'm just being blunt, I thought the outfit for the Green Goblin was horrible, and it hid one of the greatest actors that you could possibly hide. It's like, hey, look at me, I'm acting. I've got a stupid clown mask on. It wasn't scary, it just bummed me out. That was, that's like all I remember from this, the first time I watching it was being horrified of Willem Dafoe. Like he was at some of his creepiest and most evil ever. The way he was like talking to himself in the mirror, like the other voice, the other voice inside of his head was super creepy. There's only one 
who can stop us. I love the dynamic of him kind of trying to like pull Peter under his wing and then James Franco's all jealous. It's great, it's great drama. And then at the end he's like, don't tell Harry. And you're like, ah! It's great, I love it. Who is this lovely young lady? My favorite scene in Spider-Man. Is that the upside down kiss one? I think I have a superhero stalker. That kiss, that kiss. That's a hard kiss to execute. Most kids, their first kiss is very clumsy and you aim for the lips, but you miss. You get like the side of the cheek. Job well done, Peter. That's for your first kiss. Woo, it's good stuff. I loved seeing a female lead with red hair because I don't know that I'd ever seen that before then. And I was like, oh my God, Ginger. I don't love Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst, but like, I actually love them in this. I really do. So the chemistry between Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst was what I liked about it, the interaction. And you know, they, they skipped Gwen Stacy and just went right to Mary Jane. I think this is where I started going, I don't know if Kirsten Dunst is really a good actor. She's a great actress. I, I, I really like Kirsten Dunst. I'm not trying to pick on her at all, but I just, her portrayal of Mary Jane just didn't work for me. I didn't buy the chemistry uh, between her and Peter Parker. So it's a kid who nobody likes that much but he also has a crush on a girl who lives next door and somehow doesn't know he's really there. I grew up next to like two really hot sisters. They knew who I was, okay? It's not like I went one day and like after seven years of living next door, they're like, oh my God, the new guy's a Spider-Man now. Crap, crap, mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. I think number 22 is a fair landing spot for the first Spider-Man movie. I lump that in with X-Men as far as a, a social revolution, if you will, in the world of comic book movies. This was a superhero movie that was fun, but it wasn't bat nipples, Joel Schumacher, Batman fun. And I think that's a really important distinction to make. It showed that you could go from X-Men and go, well, here's a more colorful, comedic approach to a character. It's like Batman, X-Men, Spider-Man, like established like these big, this big push for these superhero universes and these superhero movies that were getting more and more ambitious. This is one of the early, it's one of like the godfathers to come in and do this. In a lot of ways, this movie and its success spells everything we have now. Because if this movie had made around the same amount of money as X-Men, they wouldn't have fought through all the failures of the of the mid 2000s and they would, Disney wouldn't have bought Marvel and it wouldn't have been a thing. I know X-Men made a lot of money. Spider-Man destroyed the box office and it showed every studio head that these are movies that we should start green lighting and getting into production because we can make money and it's probably gonna entertain a whole mass of fans in the process.